Good morning from Geneva. Welcome to this uh, Insight and ID session. We're very, very privileged uh, this morning to have with us uh, Minister uh, Mohamed Gargave. He's a Minister of Cabinet Affairs in the United uh, Emirates, uh, UAE. And um, we know that the UAE has been a leader for many years when it comes to innovation, entrepreneurship, and the competitiveness of uh, UAE uh, is quite incredible. They have built um, a new structure, they are a hub for innovation, and they have, it used, they used to have one of the busiest airports um, in uh, the world. So, um, Minister uh, Gargave, uh, great to see you. And we know that uh, UAE has also, of course, been in the middle of the struggle with this uh, pandemic. Uh, we're not uh, out of the woods yet. I heard that you have uh, personally also now taken uh, the vaccine. We know that uh, business is back now in UAE, but we all have to pivot uh, in this situation. And last year when we met in Dubai, where you were also an incredible important part of the Global Future Council meeting, you said that um, we have to collaborate more in the world because a lot of the challenges that we are met with uh, are common challenges. And look at COVID. COVID um, anywhere is everywhere. And do you see this collaboration happening uh, in the world? Um, no. And what kind of collaboration do we need? Uh, welcome. Thank you, Borge. Thank you for uh, having me and thank you for uh, the World Economic Forum for engaging us. This is our third meeting actually uh, with you. Uh, I think it is a critical time in a human history. Whatever had happened, a lot of country, a lot of government, a lot of people actually did, didn't grasp it yet. A turning point in human history. Early on, we've seen country looking inward actually. So it was for them survival to the point that they were hijacking, you know, medicine and uh, other uh, medical equipment. I think if we don't work together, this issue will continue for generation. From vaccine distribution, you know, we know, you know, when Pfizer was announced, Emirates Airlines, they decided that they're going to be a logistic hub, for example, to distribute vaccine. Two, global economy. We need to open up more gradually. We need to share information. This is a very critical time in a human history. This is the way I look at COVID-19. It's not only COVID-19, it is humanity actually at risk if we didn't deal with the situation, with the matter. If you look at even the vaccine itself today, if we don't work together, we, we are having inequality during this, you know, this time. We see the richer really got rich. So there is inequality that happened, but the most dangerous thing that we might see inequality in vaccine distribution, which is something that we need to work together. What we did really from early on, as, as a nation, believe that as, as the Emirates, we are a nation who have also a mission. We're not perfect, but always we look forward. One thing we did, we decided that we, ha we shouldn't look only inward, we have to work together. Uh, from the beginning, you know, there's shortage in medicine, in mask. We send actually medical equipment to over 100 countries. In a difficult time when nobody was flying, so we transfer our fleet to be a cargo for medical. And I think country will be evaluated in the future and their resilience, not resilience internally, but how they work together to fight a pandemic that didn't discriminate between color, religion, country, anybody. Everybody was in it together. So we need to sort it uh, together. Within our, our region, I think so, uh, situation was a bit different. Uh, Certain countries, they have the capability. Other close early. We were working together. We're sharing information. We look at the world at one. And we are getting out of it gradually. Certain sectors, fine. Life, it's there. 
the most important thing that we find out that maybe we didn't have a lot of cases, the country was almost open because we had a vaccine that everybody talked about early on, which is the mask. Everybody in the country had a discipline, actually, everybody, in wearing mask everywhere. And I think this is one that's very simple, but very important. Now, the situation is changing with a vaccine, and I think next year, hopefully, globally, regionally, we'll see a better impact in all of us, and hopefully business will move on. How many, uh, I'm just curious, uh, how fast will you now roll out the vaccine in the UAE? When do you expect to have vaccinated uh, the most vulnerable and also um, all your uh, population? From now on, I mean, we, we started actually, we started with the front line, uh, almost from the summer. I took today my second vaccine. So I am I'm one of the people who took uh, the vaccine plus, you know, so many ministers that we believe that we need to be part of this journey as, as a human journey. And you, uh, are, you feel okay after the vaccine? I, I feel fine. The first one was uh, three weeks ago, Burge, you know, but, and I have a lot of call because it was in the media. So I have friends, family calling, you know, there is, if we look at the social media, there's so many, uh, you know, theory about vaccine. But today we know that COVID will stay. And the only way out of COVID is wearing mask and vaccine. And the vaccine that, you know, there is different variety of vaccine. You have to decide which one you'll take. And we don't know all the information about the vaccine in the world, but hopefully by the end of next year, it's gonna be clear which one you can take for a longer period, how often you need to take, you know, the antibody and other, other issue. So our plan really, it is people can vaccine, they can go right now, you know, there is center where you can go and take the vaccine from now on. So, no, thank you for sharing that. I think we're uh, already uh, know uh, for the vaccination and also looking uh, beyond um, also uh, the COVID, but being better prepared and more resilient uh, in the future. In the middle of uh, the whole pandemic, uh, you were also uh, able to take some uh, very um, substantial um, policy initiatives from the UAE. For example, uh, the Abraham uh, Accord uh, was one of them. Uh, how do you expect uh, the Abraham Accord to play out you now uh, in the months uh, to come? And how do you see UAE leadership uh, in uh, the global cooperation that is uh, now needed? And also with the changing political landscape that we are, for example, seeing uh, in uh, the US? Uh, first of all, I think if you look at why Abrahamic uh, Accord, if you look at the region, Burge, for the past 70 years, we went through five major wars. It costs the region $11 trillion. Million of people have died. You have 10 million refugees. So the region try war and the result been negative in the region. It is very important in this era and for the future generation that we have to be responsible. The region try war didn't work. We are trying to develop the region through peace. It's a bold initiative that took place and we believe that we have a responsibility. Responsibility toward our region, toward our future generation, and toward the world. Unfortunately, if we look at our region, hatred been created, radicalism, extreme ideology, not only the region has suffered, but also it was exported globally from radical ideology. We suffer, the region suffer, and also globally, you know, the Paris incident. A couple of weeks it was in Austria. So to understand what, why we are doing whatever we are doing, we don't do it for ourselves. We do it because this is the right thing morally to do. 
And this is how you develop the region. And I think it is time to give a peace a chance. The region have to try full, peace for peace. You know, we had the peace agreement before. It was, you know, a transactional peace agreement. This is peace for peace. And very important for all of us, for the global community, to make sure that it will work. And for people to see the economic value, cultural value, and the world have to create example out of this out of this peace agreement. I think this is our our responsibility as a humanity. We the region got tired of war. We've seen in the past eight years. Look at our region. Didn't develop. It went back every with every generation. So if we continue that path, religious fraction, civil war, ethnic cleansing will continue. Thank you so much. And uh, also for reminding us all the humanitarian challenges, but also the human suffering that we have seen uh, from uh, the different conflicts. Three trillion US dollars lost, millions of refugees. But if you look now at uh, some of the crisis in the Middle East, I'm thinking about uh, the situation in Yemen. I'm thinking about the situation in Libya. I'm thinking about the situation in uh, Syria. Uh, we also know that uh, it is very difficult still um, in Iraq, and we don't have uh, a solution on the relationship um, in, um, with Iran. And there is also tension inside the GCC. Where are you most optimistic uh, for a uh, kind of a fast solution to peace, because there has been positive developments now in the negotiations on Libya. There's maybe some movement also on Syria on the new constitution. And in Yemen, um, there is uh, also uh, really uh, sincere uh, negotiations going on. We will see how the Biden administration uh, will then um, look at uh, Iranian uh, situation. But we know that you're so close to this and, and you're in the middle of all this. So it would be great to have your uh, insight. Uh, I am optimistic. I think it's time for peace for the whole region. But we, the most important thing, let me, let me uh, forget, you know, look at the question from different angle. Why we have an issue in Yemen, why we have an issue in Libya, why we have an issue in Iraq and other places. The region was mismanaged. Mismanaged because government, a lot of government in the region, actually, they didn't know how to manage. You had failed state. And that's, that's to my first point. That's why peace is very important. We have a lot of failed state. And these country had failed in managing the affair of a citizen, their economy, social life, cultural life, and a lot of country took people backward. So that's why very important for all of us to create a system that not only a peace agreement, but also a system where government can govern in a way that prosperity will come back to this region or will export our issue to other country globally. This is a very important point, I think so, whenever we do, yes, a peace agreement can be there tomorrow. But again, if you have another failed state in Yemen, the same issue will continue. So I think we need to have a track of really how do you uplift also government in the region. No, thank you so much. Um, we know that uh, you made this um an uh, Abraham Accord was decided in the middle of the summer, but also in July, uh, you did a major reshuffle uh, of your cabinet. Um, you got uh, younger people in, you also have very exciting uh, portfolios. You have, I think you're the only country that has like a minister for artificial intelligence. You have also underlined know the importance of um, enhancing uh, digitalization. 
But we also see a slowing of global growth. It has also impact from the UAE. So based on uh, this um, new um, garment and new ministers and also uh, the way forward, wh where will you see changes um, in uh, the policies on economics and innovation and all this uh, from the UAE? Or is it steady as she goes, but with some uh, new people uh, in the cabinet? We, we change because it's time to change. It was COVID and we understand that we have to reinvent ourselves. Government been operating globally with the same system for the past 200 years. And I think all the style of government will fail, will fail globally also. And we are seeing the issue. We're seeing social and economic issue globally. For us, it was a time of opportunity. And I call COVID is fast forward. COVID for us is fast forward. You know, things have to go quite fast compared to the time of pre-COVID. What we did actually, we downsized the government, we were realistic, and even our portfolio, you know, as you stated, we have a minister, his job is really looking at distant learning, telemedicine, distant work, and because this is the future, this is the norm. And for government not to act from now, it's, it's failure. So for us, we were, I mean, people looked at us and said, oh no, this is interesting, it's not. This is fact, this is life, this is what we do, you and I, right now. This is what our kid actually is, distant learning, they're at home. Because we have a system, we have somebody who's looking at the system, and this is the new norm. This is how we'll work in the future. Certain government are aware, the majority are not aware of what will happen in the future. So for us, it is also being realistic. Not dreamy, very realistic, because reality has changed. And when it comes to economy, the system globally has changed. Your logistics system has changed. Your e-commerce has accelerated. Your retail, you need to look at it from a different perspective. It's a new life, actually. A new social life, a new economic life, and also, if you look at United States election, it's a new political life. We are in a new era. We need to adjust to it. But also, I believe there is opportunity for country that move on. The gap will be huge, by the way. If we didn't move as a nation or as a government, we lack behind. Today, also, country have opportunity. I told you, we downsize, we downsize the, the, the government. The importance of government is it will be much more than before. COVID globally managed by government. COVID showed us also when government and politician doesn't look at the healthcare system, they fail. And the system fail. And their economy fail. And they'll have a social issue within their society. So it is a good stress test for government globally, for politician. And with us, we decided that we need to move fast. As you said, it's fast forward. We need to be agile and we need to give people what people want and what's important for them was before we had economy, before uh, politics, as Hassanah Sheikh Mohammed stated, then he said during COVID, it is actually health economy than politics who will carry everybody well thank you so much um we also um together um we inaugurated uh the fourth industrial revolution uh center um affiliated center uh in dubai uh the world economic forum has its main center as many of you maybe know in San Francisco, but we have affiliated centers. And the first one was opened uh, in Dubai. Now we have uh, eight of them and we will very soon have 10 of them. I'm thinking about how much do you discuss in the cabinet um, the fact that uh, success in the future will be based on how far uh, you have come to implement 
the new technologies. Those most powerful nations uh, and most successful also when it comes to prosperity this century will be those that are on top of big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all this. So, I how, where do you think the UAE stands today? Are you happy of on where you stand? Where would you like to be in a decade? Do you see yourself as the new Silicon Valley uh, of the Middle East? And um, where are you today? And you think you will get there? When it comes to technology, uh, Borge, we need to understand now it's actually we live in the first second of the first minute of the first hours of the first day of the first year when it comes to technology. Technology just have started. And that's why this time period is very important in a human history. So this is just the beginning. And the gap in the next 30 years, it wouldn't be 30 years between country that embrace technology and country that don't embrace. It will be in hundreds of years, the gap actually. The economic gap, the knowledge gap within society. For us, we believe that we have a mission. One mission is really how do we give hope for young talent within our region? This is very important for us. As we stated, we, we decided that, you know, for us as a nation, we need to be a nation with a mission in life. As, you know, human have a mission, company have a mission as a country we have a mission in life mission is not to look only internally to look at our region to give hope for young kids to be a puller for this region from its misery this is important for for all us that's why we wake up every morning we work long hours because there is a mission in life for all of us here when it comes to technology i think we are very much in the forefront of technology we embrace technology we have a minister of artificial intelligence for you know distant learning from telemedicine plus so many other because we believe that if we didn't do that we lack behind so in government i'll give you two examples a lot of country closed school actually during covid for us we started digital schooling 10 years ago we were open through the whole thing. We had exam, student learn, but we didn't stop there. Last week, Hazana Sheikh Mohammed announced digital school actually. So we took the whole system, improving it, and we'll start in refugees camp because refugee from Syria been losing, you know, kids, they lost two, three, four years of no education. So for us, how do we do whatever we have and take it regionally than take it globally? And that's, that's what we do with technology. Technology is, is not a luxury. Technology, it's really, it is how do you dismantle knowledge to humanity? This is the importance of technology. How do you fight extremism through the right knowledge? Either they win or we win for us. As you state, it's a state of mind that we need to improve life of kids in this region and also give them hope. And that's why when you look at a lot of, you know, survey, the majority of young uh, Middle Eastern, they want to come to the Emirates because it's equal opportunity. You can create a company like uh, a person I know, Ronaldo Mshahwar, he's a Syrian from Aleppo. He started a company called Sugh.com, which is Amazon bought it for hundreds of million. This is equal opportunity. Maybe in other country, in the Middle East, he have to be a partner with somebody influential. Maybe corruption wouldn't allow him. Here we gave him the opportunity. You know, Uber bought a company called Kareem, local company for $3 billion. And it, it was made for people, international people, not even Emirati. So this is the opportunity. This is technology. Technology is creating opportunity for people. For us, technology is unleashing human potential within our region. And this is the way I, I look at whatever we do. And as a government, as I stated, it is, we believe that 
technology will make us move fast forward even in our mission in life. No, thank you so much, uh, Minister Gargave, uh, Excellency. Um, I think this is uh, such a good note uh, to end on, uh, such a vision for the future. And I know that the young people in the UAE is also very excited uh, about uh, the, mission, the space mission uh, that you have launched. It's inspired a lot of young people to really uh, dig deep uh, into uh, also natural uh, sciences. Thank you for sharing with us uh, today your vision uh, for peace uh, in the region. Instead of uh, using trillions of US dollars on fighting each other, uh, creating extremism, uh, refugees. Thank you uh, also for um, your leadership uh, on uh, technologies and also giving opportunities uh, to people in the region. I just saw uh, that uh, Sheikh Mohammed, the ruler of Dubai, launched uh, this new golden um, visas for people for 10 years that want to stay in the UAE uh, if they um, contribute. Thank you also um, for being uh, such a close uh, collaborator and a friend of the World Economic Forum. Um, His Excellency Minister Mohammed Al Gawi uh, of the UAE. Thank you so much. Shukran. Thank you, you Thank you. See you.